Welcome to PLM in 10. Today's episode is What's in That Recipe? Achieving Product Data Traceability with SAP PLM 7.02. Now, when we talk about traceability, there's two components. There's batch traceability, which is on the downstream manufacturing side, and there's what we're going to talk about today, which is product data traceability. So what does that mean exactly? Um, say, for instance, there's a recall of a certain ingredient uh, that you use in in your products, or a supplier is discontinuing a certain ingredient that's used in a number of your, your products. What you need to be able to do in your product development system is quickly search and trace down what recipes are affected and make it make a change within that recipe and then synchronize those recipes to the bills of materials um, that eventually get pushed out to manufacturing. So I have with me today Tony Marchione is a solution engineer here at Lynx AS and he's going to walk us through SAP recipe development and show us how the SAP solution can help us with product data traceability issues. Tony? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to find all the recipes in the system that contain a specific ingredient that's been replaced by our vendor. First one had vent had nuts in it. Now we want to replace it with one that doesn't have nuts in it anymore. So we, on the PLM screen, we can do a, a Google type of search to search for any kind of <clears throat> excuse me recipe that has a specific um, word in the keyword in it. But we're going to do an advanced search so we have a little more criteria in there. So I'm going to click on the advanced search button. And that's going to take me to a new screen where I can actually search by a number of different criteria. And for this example, I want to search for a recipe that has a specific input or output. You notice on this tab, I can search for either the input specification or the input material. Obviously, the specification is the PLM object that we deal with in recipes. The material is the material master from SAP Logistics. So we can do searches here if we want. There's all kind of search criteria I'll, I'll show in a second by clicking on the pull down arrow. Or uh, we can just enter the number in directly, which I'm going to do just to save some time here. So I'm going to search for every recipe that has specific, specific, specification 2 star 20 in it. And as I type that in, I'll have to start by the go button. And then we'll get the results of all the recipes that include that specific ingredient. And you notice when the results come up, there are 12 recipes that contain that ingredient. You can tell by the number of hits on the bottom of the screen. A couple ways we can make changes here. Uh, I could select every item on this list by clicking on the select item, select icon up there, and then go to the mass change functionality. But for simplicity purposes here, we're going to just pick one recipe and change that recipe specifically and talk through the process itself. So I'm going to deselect all of these items. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the first recipe in the list, the chocolate product recipe. And we're going to change that one to, to include the new ingredient. So when I click on the hyperlink for that recipe, it's going to open up a new window to show me that formula. And you notice up at the top, we have a key associated with this recipe. If you've been to our other PLM and 10 sessions before, you'll know that this key is related to the specification number that we're producing. That's the 300016 number up the top. The second set of numbers, the 000, is the alternate. That's the, the different ways of manufacturing a given finished product. And at the very end is the 000, which is the version. So as we make changes to an alternate, we will have a new version. So right now we're looking at alternate 000, version 000 of making this chocolate product. So we're going to go to that. You'll notice also right now we're in a release status. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new version of this recipe because this one's been released to the shop floor and I can't make any changes to it. So I'm going to accept the defaults on this screen and just create a brand new version. And now you'll notice when I maximize the screen, now I'm looking at the same bomb alternate, but now I have version 001. So it's a new version of the same alternate for that finished product. When I go to the formula tab, that's where I can actually make the change to substitute in my new ingredient. And there's a couple ways of doing this. We can search for our, our, our number that we're going to change to. There's all kinds of searching capabilities here. We could type it in. For simplicity's purposes in this demo, what I'd like to do is just swap out the number here. So I'm going to replace number specification number 20 with specification number 21. And you notice the, the, the description there says ingredient with peanuts. The material mass, I'm going to swap out to a different material number. Notice when I change this, the, the descriptions are going to change. Notice the material description is different than the material than the description for the specification. That'll be important later on when we do our bomb synchronization. So from here, what we do, we'd have to go through a, an approval process to actually go through the approval of making sure this recipe is suitable for formulation. 
So um, typically every company has a different process for approving a recipe. Um, one thing you might want to do is to go through the calculation results, which I can show by clicking on that calculation result button here, and show that we might want to check that um, the recipe has the right nutritional properties that, we were, that we're looking for. And again, in this scenario, make sure that it doesn't contain any peanuts. Uh, we're not going to show all that. We've shown that in previous PLM and TENS. But for this uh, scenario, we want to assume that everything's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the general data tab, and I'm going to change the status of the recipe to one that's suitable for um, releasing to the shop floor. And again, there would normally be a business process behind this, but for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to change the statuses manually. So once I get the status 300, that's the release status, now I'm in a status that can, I can take this data and synchronize it with the shop floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually change the bill of material associated with this specific formulation. And I'll do that by clicking on the menu up top on the You Can Also menu. And I'll pick the Synchronize Recipe to Bill of Material. When I do that, I'll get a new screen that pops up, my, my synchronization screen. And you'll notice that this formula has already been synchronized to a bill of material in the past. That's the bill of material number I'm clicking on right now. Notice the status says not aligned. We have made a change to the formula in PLM that's different from what's in the bill of material. So what I'm going to do now is I'll align those two so that what we say we're making from the development side agrees with what we say we're making on the production side. So I can select my synchronization line there and click the Start Synchronization button which will take me to this reconciliation workbench where I can actually examine the changes that have been made and, and get some feedback on what to do next. I'll have to enter in a change number here because we're using uh, engineering change management with our bills of material. So I'll type in a uh, change number here to, to make that change. And you'll notice that, um, oops, sorry about that. When you type in the actual change number, um, the PLM uh, web UI can search for objects that match those first keys. That's for all objects in, in, in PLM, not just the change number, but it's a way of typing ahead. So I'll pick my change master, the one I'm going to use to synchronize my bill of material, hit the OK button, and the reconciliation workbench will open. This will show me graphic, uh, graphically what has changed. And again, this is configurable. You can configure how this, this looks. But you'll notice here that we have some green lights indicating that according to the criteria that we've configured, swapping out one material for another material is an OK change. It doesn't require any manual intervention. We have, could have configured this to have a red stoplight, and then someone would have, to make, would have manually had to approve the change um, to go forward. But again, in this, in, in this instance, we're going to say that's OK. We've configured the system to say that kind of a change it gives us a green light. So once I'm satisfied with all the, the data that I see in the reconciliation workbench, I'll save my, my synchronization, synchronization, and you'll notice here that my bill of material has been saved. And we can go back and take a look at that bill of material to see how those changes. So I'll close this window down. And I'll click on the hyperlink to open that bill of material. And you'll notice that I'm going to display the bill of material as of today. That's the date that was tied to the engineering change master. And you'll notice here you see ingredient number two. I can also shift dates to so say, show me what the bill of material looked like previously. So I can do a simple date shift just by typing a date in there. Or if I click on the advanced date selection screen, I'll have a little more control over what I'm going to take a look at. So I'll click on that icon. And you'll notice here I can actually do date shifts. So if I shift back to the last period, which happened to be yesterday, since that's the day before our change number, notice that we're looking at ingredient number one in our bill of material. And again, if I shift it forward to what we did just, pre just previously in our little demo, now I'm looking at ingredient two. So you have a really uh, high visibility as to what the changes are to your bill of material going from period A to period B. And this gets tied back to the engineering change numbers that I used to make my changes previously. All right, that's a wrap on traceability. Uh, thanks, Tony, for walking us through the system. Um, for Just for your information, what we're looking at here is SAP PLM 7.02. So that's Enhancement Pack 6, and we're looking at recipe development. Um, if you have any questions regarding this topic or if you have suggestions for other topics, Please feel free to contact me. My uh, contact information on the closing screen. And thank you for joining us.